Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the uh, Southwest Hearts Local History TV channel with uh, myself and Dave Sawyer. Come and say hello, David. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon, everybody. Good to be back with you again. <laughs> yeah, no, we got we got a funny old show today. We got um, we got listed buildings now. By the very nature, they're uh, they're quite old and uh, they're um, been salvaged for some reason or other because of important history, local history, I guess. It's mainly architecture, I think, that uh, is there. But yes, a lot of uh, local history there that uh, you can see. Um, and it just goes in with what we've been talking about in the past. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of these. I have added a few of my own to the end of them, just as a like quiz master that I am. <laughs> just to... Oh, thank you, Chris. Yes, I'm going to enjoy this, I think. <laughs> Not. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and actually, if you if people watching want to see some of these pictures, if you look at the Southwest Hearts Community Hub, uh, which I might put a link on afterwards to this, um, go and have a look, because if you look in the pictures in Watford, you go back to June, July, August of 2014, you'll find there's quite a lot of pictures of old buildings of Watford sitting there uh, and you can have a quick browse through them uh, with a little bit of an explanation of some of them and some people not really knowing what they're taking a picture of and that would include me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Is that one of the buildings I've looked at today? Yeah, I've, I've put some up there, but you'll probably know what they are because they're quite, they're quite uh, famous buildings in Watford. But anyway, I'm going to share my screen now and uh, well, let's see what we can uh, muster up for the folks here. So... Uh, uh, let's in, do that, and let me uh, go to that. Oops! Oh no! What have I done? I've uh, it looks like I've deleted the wrong window there. Uh, hold on a second, and let me drag that back up again. Uh, technology wonderful yeah can you can you see all this going on here i can see things going on you're back onto a google search page yeah yeah so i'm just gonna now go into the pictures so that we can uh, i can find them yes yeah, so i found right, out a couple of, uh, good things that i i never knew and uh, i don't know if um people out there new or, or even yourself that uh, can surprise some people I think well let me go on to this shared a little bit of a demonstration of uh, Google Drive going on here <laughs> <laughs> so let's just find here we go listed buildings I just managed to close that window for some strange reason Right, so these aren't going to be in the order that you've got them in by the looks of it, but anyway. Okay. All right, well, um, what we have here is the Toll House on Hempstead Road. So it would appear from that and the name of the place that it was actually a toll road at one stage in its lifetime. Um, it looks almost Tudor in, in design on there. I haven't got uh, too much information on that one as yet. Is uh, going to be one of my next ones to look at, but uh, that'd be interesting. That's the, so that's in the main Hempstead Road, isn't it? The main Hempstead Road, virtually opposite the bottom of Ridge Lane. Right. So again, just before you get to sort of Grove Mill Lane. Oh, I but, think that they put they put some nice Christmas decorations on that tr house. I seem to remember as I've driven past on a number of occasions. So um, possibly. That's one to look out for. It's on the left-hand side. He's driving out of Watford, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Roach opposite Ridge Lane. Interesting. Okay, so that's the first one I've got there for you. What have we got next? Oh, this one is the, the Canal Cottage down Grove Mill Lane. This was um, listed in 1983. Most of these are, the, the, these are all Grade Two listed buildings in the area. Some um, listed in the early 80s. Uh, obviously, someone had a, a sort of um, a thought about we should be protecting some of these buildings. And this is a, a quaint little cottage, almost like a lock keeper's cottage, right down by the canal bridge in Grove Mill Lane. 
Now, where's that then? Is that down by the grove? Is that that turning on the left as you go out? Turning on the left before you get to the grove, which is Grove Mill Lane. And you go down there and it goes over a bridge. And, and just before the first bridge, right on the bridge, right on the canal side by the bridge, is the uh, canal cottage. And that's yeah. on the left or the right? On the left hand side. The left hand side, you go down there towards the, the, the yeah. Grove Estate is on the right. Interesting. Uh, people watching this, you have to come find these buildings because they're quite interesting. Um, so, uh, now this right. one, this one has a, a little bit of um, my history in, in there as much as uh, it's Central Primary School. It's so, is that, is that opposite the girls' grammar school? No, no, this is opposite the Into Centre. Oh, what? But uh, okay. Derby Road, Grosvenor Road. Ah, it's set back off the road slightly. That's right. It's an actual fact between um, the ring road and the school, there is a, another road which is a dead end to get round to it. That's There's right. Car, I've got cars parked park. in it. That's right, yeah. Because um, uh, they, they set up a, a special needs um, unit there, which my son went to when they started it, which was a, a great help for him. Ah. I mean, the, the, so is that run by the church or? No, it's um county, county education. Oh. Okay, and 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 so it, what you've got? It's a grown primary school in in general, but as I say, it actually has a a separate or had a separate unit for special needs children because we had a, a lack of places in within Watford for that when my son was there. I mean, he's now twenty nine years old, so it's a. Uh, been about 16 for 13 years since he was around even even longer since he was there because he moved from there to a school in Redbourne when he went to secondary school isn't it interesting that the art the architecture of that building is almost identical to the architecture of reeds uh in terms of the red, red brick around the windows and the, and the decorating around the window the window frame area um, yeah. and, and, and the steeple is of uh, similar it uh, is um, the architecture is very similar i mean reeds estate um the orphanage way is just around the corner from there and a lot yeah. of it built so uh, at a similar time i mean this one was built in 1884. right and i, and I think i think the uh, leaves the mental hospital and all of those types of buildings would have been of a similar ilk they would have been around the sim similar sort of time so it's um a big time of building in the area wouldn't it sorry it was a big time of building in the area. Was, well, we've got to go look back at what we've spoken about before. This was a time of um, the, the Metropolitan Line coming out to, to Watford, commuter belt, a lot more people coming out to, to live here so they could uh, commute into London very easily. So, yeah, um, schools. Yeah, we, we did need to build. And of course, a lot of the, the stuff around in North Watford, where I am, was railway cottages for the railway building yeah. out there. We've got the main line, obviously, and people working on the railway, presumably. Yeah. Yeah, David. Sorry. You still there, David? I can't hear you. Yeah, can you hear me, right? That's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you were flashing in and out there for a second. It might have been mm -hmm. me. Um, okay. So that that's a what's that name of that building? That's Central Primary School. Central Primary interesting well that's it so there we go and there's a bit of history here isn't there we know this one well don't we this was um originally built for the watford hippodrome company limited right in 1908 and it opened as the watford palace of varieties and right. it had quite quite a list of artists that came uh we're looking at um M mary lloyd uh, Charlie Chaplin, Little Titch, Dan Leno, all appeared Charlie at the Watford Chaplin Palace. played there, did he? Sorry? Charlie Chaplin played there. Charlie Chaplin, Mary Lloyd. <laughs> now, forgive me if I'm wrong, but when they first built this, didn't they build it without the facade that we familiar that familiar it, it with? Wasn't, yeah, this is a rebuilt facade from ah, and it was only built like a, the rebuilt facade was only like a few years afterwards, wasn't it? It wasn't too long afterwards. Um uh no i think it was a 
probably about 10 years later that they, they changed it or something like that. But uh, it's it's how they built a new, a new I, I consider that in Clarendon Road, where that is, obviously, there was a lot of redevelopment. You had the drill hall next door to it, which right. uh, then shot, was a cinema which we, we've sh shown before. And that was demolished and built. And they redid the green room for the Palace Theatre as well. And it's just been there ever since. And hopefully it will last a lot longer. Mm. And so when you look at the, the people they've had there before, and of course we have the pantomime there every year, which is always good. It used to be, um, I think, written by Roy Hudd. Right. Yeah. So, I wonder what he's got there. Of, um, entertainment. Mm. So on to the next one. Uh, now, now this is a, a block of uh, fairly expansive um, buildings, isn't it? And above the skyline, well, you can see there the pizza area there. Um, it's uh, th this is in the middle of Watford Parade, and uh, it's uh, it's quite a, an interesting building, isn't it? It is. It's called Monmouth House. Right. And Monmouth House was um, built in the mid 17th century for Mr. Carey, who was then the Earl of Monmouth. Right. Um, it was part rebuilt in 1927 using bricks from Cassabry House when they demolished that. Yeah. So Monmouth House for the Earl of Monmouth. Now, so what? So presumably the whole of the building right down to the ground was was it would have been and it continues on this goes up to the alleyway which that leads through to sainsbury's and right. there's two sections of it the north and the south section and it was the north north section that was rebuilt to match the south side this is the south part of it here so who, who did that belong to? The Earl of Monmouth? The Earl of Monmouth, Mr. R. Carey. At the and what, and um, what was he doing with the house in the Watford? Well, probably the same as the Earls of Essex, who, whose bricks he used to, to build it. Right. I so suppose. We've had, we've had the Earl of Ex Ex Essex and the Earl of Monmouth here, in what, living here in Watford. We're a bit um, far away from Monmouth here, and... Uh, Possibly a bit maybe, Essex, but um, maybe it was his London pad. <laughs> yeah, a Pierre de Terre. And yeah, he had the whole house. That was some 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 little Pierre de Terre. It was indeed. indeed yeah. Um, right. Okay. So that's Monmouth House. Well, what have we got there? Then we got a tree. What we've got there is a tree, and behind the tree we have scaffolding and a crane, and that's all hiding the facade of the Lloyd's Bank building in the High Street. Okay, so this this is where they've removed the rest of the uh, old charter place and uh, various other buildings, and they've left here erect uh, a frontage, yeah. which is listed, presumably. Yeah, it was listed in 1980. The building itself dates back to 1889, and it was originally built as a bank, originally for Bucks and Oxen Bank. Oh, that well-known bank. <laughs> uh, everyone knows Bucks and Oxen. And of course, why, why wouldn't you have a Bucks and Oxen bank in Hertfordshire? Yeah, Bucks and Oxen, yeah. Um, but again, once the building has been complete, the new uh, development of the Intu Centre, all the scaffolding will be removed, and you'll see again the uh, the frontage of the old Lloyds Bank. And when was that bus listed there? <laughs> it was listed at 1452, but I think it was a bit late. <laughs> yeah so it, i mean there isn't actually any good way of getting a shot of that thing on the scaffold in there is it because the tree in the way this way there's all sorts of stuff in the way the other directions you just can't get a decent shot of it and uh, you can't um and I, I'm, I'm beginning to wonder whether it's going to look a bit out of place in amongst a brand new building well we'll have to wait and see won't we it'll, no. um, i don't know whether it will look like an old bank facade stuck on the side of a modern building. <laughs> well, I, I think the nearest we can get to that that we know about now is the old uh, Oval Team factory down in Apsley. Yeah. They did exactly the same. They kept the facade of the factory and just built apartments behind it. But most it's of, done a reasonable most job of the apartments are hidden by the facade. Yeah, it's done a reasonable job. They, they did the same with the Tesco's down uh, the A41, didn't they? The, yeah, the old Hoover building. 
yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Fine. Sort of 1930s Art Deco type uh, frontage on it. Well, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. When is this building supposed to be finished? Do you have any idea on when, the, when it's all supposed to be finished? Well, I, I can't see anything actually going up at the moment. I can see lots of cranes there and a lot of lorries going in and out. So they must be building some very fairly deep foundations and basements, I should think. But yeah. uh, it, I can't see it being finished. It's going to be a couple of years at least. I'm it's, sure. it's really interesting because. When you look at the, when you look at the uh, fly-through video that I put up a little while back, um, it looks like the majority of what was there was remaining, and actually yeah. all they were doing was essentially reskinning it with a load of other stuff. But, but haven't they demolished the whole thing? They've demolished everything behind it. The whole of Charter Place was gone. Yeah, but I, I thought when I looked at the fly-through, it looked, in terms of layout, incredibly similar. You know, the escalators were where they used to be, the, the shops were kind of where they used to be, different usage, but it looked like, in terms of the, the space, it was being used in a very similar way to the way Charter Place was. It almost like they weren't going to demolish it, they were just going to reskin it and make it look better. Mm. But actually, they've demolished the whole thing, haven't they? They've demolished the whole thing. The only thing that's left, of course, is the, the Charter Place car park there, which is overlooking that at the moment. Yeah, yeah. You had um, shops like Argos and the market underneath that. And yeah, underneath they're... that was a, a great big um, basement area for yeah. deliveries and things like that for the market and the shops. So Interesting stuff. That's under the car park. Okay. Right. The One Crown Pub. That's in the... Right. The high street, virtually opposite um, Boots in the uh, Harlequin. Oh, sorry, the Into Centre. Keep calling it the Harlequin. I can't get used to Into. Where is that then? Is that that's not the one crown, as in the one in front of St Mary's? No, that was the one bell. Ah, this so where is this further down towards the lower high street end, near the junction of the high street and where the old pyramid is? What, the is this that, pub still there? That pub's still there. That was taken today, that picture. I didn't even know that that pub was still there. <laughs> Again, it's just um, an old pub that's been been in the area for well, quite a few years. It's not actually... I didn't actually manage to get the... Uh, that's the One pub. Crown. The One Crown pub. It's listed. It was listed and, uh, in, the, and, uh, in the halls. Are they the only two open pubs as were in the high street now um apart from the the bars and what have you you've got up in the the uh latin quarter as it is the same yeah. you know the, um bosley's and um bodega things like that but as pubs go that's about it i think now those two in it yeah one bell's gone now when well when you consider that what was again Used to be have its own brewery. Well, it said three, didn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, Benskins was very big, and then that was taken over by Ein, Ein Coop. So Sedgwick wasn't Sedgwick's brewery there. Um, not sure Sedgwick's myself, but uh, no, not big I... man like you or not. Mm. But, um, right. Well, there we go. The museum. Look. The museum. Now, this was listed in, again in 1952. Um, it was originally built for the Dyson family, and I'm just wondering, back in that uh, sort of age that this was built, I don't think it was the same Dyson who made made cleaners. But um, no. it, it was um, bought in 1967 by Joseph Benskin. Now, it was a brewery before that, and it continued to be a brewery until it was bought by Eind Coop in 1957, and they then turned it into offices. It became a museum in 1981. <coughs> it was opened by a Watford actor comedian. And that was Terry Scott. Ah, who went to Watford Grammar, of course. Of course. Another local one. <laughs> but um, again, it's one of those. Uh, was it, um, yeah, it was listed in 1952, that one. And so, um, so in 1867, it was taken over by the, the name Benskins, obviously, that uh, we, we all know and uh, think of with it, with uh, reference to Watford Brewery. 
Yeah, yeah. Interesting place. Now, now we all know this. this. It's not a very good view, unfortunately. I couldn't get the the other side because the sun was going straight into my eyes. Um, right, it, right. Uh, it wasn't a very good picture, but this is obviously Bushy Arches, and built in 1934 <laughs> to 1937. Um, and that was. Give me three guesses who the engineer was, who designed the bridge. Um, wasn't that uh, guy from uh, Uxbridge area? Was it? Um, Robert Stevenson. Oh no, no. Oh, Stevenson's why? Yeah. That's why it's that Stevenson's way, because it goes underneath the railway. And the whole viaducts there were designed by Robert Stevenson. Mm, interesting. Obviously carries the main London to Birmingham railway line over London, the Watford Road. It's <clears throat> It's got a, um, underneath the one of the central arches is a, a, a pillbox. Obviously a leftover from the Second World War. Why, why do you want the pillbox just there? I suppose to try and protect the, the, the viaduct in some way, shape or form. But it, now at night it is illuminated and welcomes people to Watford. When was that viaduct built? It was built in 19, sorry, 1834 mm. to 1837. The this, this size you can see there, that was an addition to, to it, to a strengthening because obviously they required um, since that time, there are more more lines going through, and you've got the um, through expresses going through, and they needed that little bit more. There's a, the, the original arches, I think, carry the um, the local trains. Right. They've, they've got the stop at Bushy Station, Lower High Street, things like that, or going straight into Central Watford. Mm, interesting. Well, well, well. So, what have you got to surprise me with? Uh, wait, wait this, this is it. What for grammar school for boys? Ex pupil, Mr. Chris Ogle and <laughs> Tony Scott. Yeah, it was a, I had a great time there. Um, great school. Uh, I moved, of course, from St. Mary's there, where the Dame Fuller school was for the disadvantaged children of Watford and uh, we used to go up there with a um as a kind of pilgrimage every year um on the inauguration of the school uh and then eventually this school was opened and the girls school was open but uh yeah it's it's 300 odd years old now um the actual idea of the Watford School, how long Watford Grammar School has been there, can't give you an exact figure, but it's an incredibly beautiful building, I think. It's, it's a beautiful building. Um, I'm not too keen on the music annex they've built. I don't think it really fits in with it. <laughs> no, we, we do make some strange choices on modern buildings. However, the building itself is a remarkable sound and acoustic um miracle it's it, the bbc use it to record things it's uh, it's got a real reputation in hertfordshire as being a center of excellence for music um in fact my old school pal stephen hussey is director of music at Watford grammar school <laughs> in actual fact i'm not too sure but uh, jane didn't paul go there for music uh my son. Cooking. Uh, cooking. My son went there to, to learn cooking with um, Leisure Together from Mencap. Right. But it's, uh, it, it's um, you know, the school's gone through a lot since I have uh, I was there, but a um, new sports hall and a new gym and they've closed the swimming pool, sold off bits of the land. But all in all, the school's been uh, one of the top 100 schools in the country for many, many years. Now an ac academy, I believe. Yeah, very difficult to get into as well, I should think. Yeah, I only got in there through sibling relationships. Uh, not that I wouldn't have got in there, but my brother was the one that took me <laughs> 11 plus, and uh, I got in by by default kind of thing. Oh, there you go. It's one of those things. I don't think you can do that too much these days. I think there is an entrance exam now for the, both the grammar schools, Parmenters and Rickmansworth School. Yeah, and you also have to live fairly close as well. You can't just, uh, most of the intake has to come from around the area. 
I know, and but there is still a lot of people there that uh, flout the system and get accommodation addresses within the borough. Yeah, yeah. Just to try and get because it is such a well-respected school. Absolutely, yeah. So that's what for grammar, lovely, lovely building, um, and uh, I've got um, a couple of other buildings to throw at you, David. That looks like uh, the old Nat West building up in the top of the parade now used as Bodega Bar. Yeah, now this is not listed, funnily enough, but what an odd looking building. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I mean, it, it has the appearance of a, um, a bank. You know, it was, obviously it was, I mean, you, you can see in the centre of the uh, centre yeah, of the cash the bank, bank. Um, that obviously was a night safe. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, is it, it doesn't fit in again with the rest of the architecture around the, the parade. And I think the top floor, or the top floors, I don't know whether there's one or two, are belong to legal firms, I think. Yeah, the, the door on the left is um, an entrance to a solicitor's office, and the door on the right, right is an, an entrance to the Bodega Bar. So that's an interesting bird. I just took that a while back. Uh, these. This has got to be on the orphanage site, yeah? It, reads. No, this is, this is not. This is huh? up in... You know Nascot Wood. You know that. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're coming towards Watford down Langley Road, past the old West Hearts College campus, which is now being converted into building into houses, yeah. and you take that Church Road, is it off the left hand side? Yes, I know. Yeah. And you just go down there towards because it, it's a, just a dead end, isn't it? But St Albans Road at the end of that. But before that, on the right hand side, you've got these. Ah, oh, grief. I've been down that road many times. I can't say as I've actually noticed those there. <laughs> Set back off the off the main drag, but I think they're old, like arms houses type things, I believe. Yeah, I mean, we must have had some. I, I was thinking the arms houses or something like that would have been around the back of uh, by St Mary's. Um, there are uh, some around there. Yeah, but again, most of the churches would um, be looking after the, the 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 poor and the needy. So. Yeah, or maybe, or maybe there are uh, just around, just um, virtually on that junction as uh, the the road runs out near um, near the St Albans Road. There is a church just there, so it could be associated. Yeah, anyway, it's an interesting, very interesting building. Um, there you go. Now that looks like it uh, is again near St. Ma is it near St. Mary's that one? It is. That's in King Street. King Street. Yeah, opposite what was um, not not the old um, bingo hall or cinema. No, it's just down the road from the Mecca. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, th so this is uh, this used to be. I mean, there's a fantastic history to this building because one day I met the great 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 granddaughters who live in australia who come over to europe and they came here and her like great granddad like end times removed was the guy that used to own this house all right and um uh and i think it was, his name was jonathan king and not the jonathan king no, no, <laughs> Jonathan King was the name of the and that's why it's called King Street. Actually, this street oh. was, in there, was in there, was in their driveway, <laughs> um, and it was a much bigger land, of course, at the time. Well, that's right. Again, this is when the urban sprawl came out, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and um, and and in the end, he was a he did he never got had any children, and um, he ended up moving out of here. He, he and he moved down to Wiganall Wiganall Hall. Which was where the old dump was, and there was a big building there on there, and he moved down there. Uh, the so family you Wigan Hall, Hall. I, I would think that would be in Wigan Hall. Say Wigan Hall, yeah. Uh, but anyway, they, they they owned both of those buildings, and uh, they were obviously quite wealthy. And I think, I think so. um, there was some relationship with the. Uh, with the brewing and, and stuff in the town at the time. But um, yeah, but there's, there's quite an interesting story. I did post up about this guy because they'd sent me the details about him. And it's quite a fascinating history. Yeah. But uh, I just thought I'd pop that in there. No, that's, that's good. It's uh, uh, Jackson's the jewelers up um, 
up near the flyover. Yeah, now this has got to be listed. Um, it could well be. I haven't. Th yes, it is. Thinking about it, it's in my book of my book of words that uh, we use for this um, program, which is the the book of Watford, a portrait of right. Watford. And if I just refer to my reference book here and see if I can find it, that I'm sure it is. Is it number ninety six? High Street. 26, it says there. In actual fact, Jackson's is listed yep. as 15 to 16 the parade. <laughs> 16 the parade. Yeah. And that was listed yeah. in 19, again, 1980. Most of these buildings seem to have been listed in 1983. Which is, um, right. But yes, it's uh, certainly a lot older than that, without a doubt, just looking at it. I've actually been in there. I've been upstairs to have a look at the rooms upstairs in, in with a view to doing some presentations up there and stuff. And it's uh, these buildings are so equally pickledy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be like if you find a straight wall in any of them. Oh, there is no straight walls anywhere to be seen. And, and I think it's all lath and plaster as well, going back yeah. to the old style of building, you know. Um, but yeah, interesting stuff. Um, so I think that I think that was my my last one actually yeah so uh, a, a, a good couple of, or three pictures there that uh, I hadn't got round to, to looking at but uh, uh, again interesting from uh, the point of view of what we're doing absolutely uh, what what um, hang on a sec where am I uh, let's stop stop sharing and then and then I'll be back in the room there we are. Yeah, there we go. I forgot what I was doing there for a second. Um, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, uh, your mind much more important than this at the moment. I can understand that. It's not a problem. Yeah, but, but no, that was a that was a really interesting step through there, and uh, uh, just to sort of see some of those old uh, areas. And of course, it's, it's steeped in history, as we know, in Watford, and loads of interesting nooks and crannies for people to do. And in fact, that that. There's that Facebook group, which is really interesting pictures that uh, of all different parts of Watford in the past. There's thousands of pictures on there. The ones that Kevin Kevin France post posts and Richard Masson, I think it is. Yeah, it's another. Yeah, he's puts loads up there, and you know different parts of Watford. And I saw a video the other day of a traffic jam in the 1970s in Watford. Yeah, <laughs> but about three cars in it. Don't tell me. But um, now there was a lot more cars in it than that. But you know, probably half of them had broken down. Yeah. I think Kevin posted on Facebook the other day that they've now got over four and a half thousand photographs in their their, their repertoire, which uh, would be uh, quite a small program for us to do, really, Chris. On that basis, four and a half thousand yeah. photos. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, some of those might have been included uh, buildings that we've been talking about today, and certainly the. the, the the ones that you've posted, the Jacksons and the, the, the house in King Street. Yeah. But, um, and of course, the ones uh, down there off Church Road, I think. Yeah. Um, when, when you look at the, the mixture of architecture we have here in Watford, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, if you go on the most out, outrageous buildings of its time was the pyramid down the bottom end of uh, the high street, which became blockbuster video. And people looked at that and thought, what the heck is that? Yeah. What's it doing here? But then the N2 Centre came, and that's a fairly modern building. The new one, obviously, is going to follow suit. But when you consider when the N2 Centre was built as the Harlequin, and we got Watford Springs out of that, which lasted but a few years before it um, decided to crack up. Yeah. Again. I don't know if uh, Watford Borough Council are doing us any favours in getting us something to go along with the extension to the N2 Centre. Who knows? Time will tell, but uh, it's uh, it's going up and they're building it. But I've got a, I was going to put a picture up of a view from the car park down onto uh, yeah. the old the the Charter Place, you know, because actually that'll be a bit of history in time. <laughs> it will be. And next, I'm just I don't know if any any um, archaeologists have been around on that site looking to see if there's any any history there. I mean, James Watford goes back. So when we talked the uh, last time about uh, Cassio Park, which was in the what the eighth century, King Offa gave that to the Diocese of St Albans. So I mean, there's got to be some more history here hidden. I know 
somebody told me at one stage that the Grove Hotel stands on an old stone, stone, um, stone age site. So Watford has got a lot of history there. Yeah, definitely. Well, the land's been there for a lot longer than we have. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff. Okay, well, it's been another interesting show. Uh, I hope uh, people have been watching it, they've enjoyed it, and uh, share it about. And uh, what have we got coming up next time, David? I've still got to think, and I've got to work on that. I've got a, a couple of um, things I've got to sort out first, but uh, let it come as a bit of a surprise. Okay. okay, I'm up for surprises. Yeah. Now that'll be <laughs> will that be around the tenth or eleventh? Uh, what are we talking about? That's going to be about the twelfth, I think. Well, okay, good stuff. Okay, David, lovely to see you, and uh, good show, and uh, catch up with you uh, in two weeks' time. Okay, lovely. Thanks everybody for watching. <laughs>